again, I'm Michael, how you doing? Another show for you this evening, uh, or this particular show let's say. We're going to look at some uh, great footage for you. And uh, anyway, some, yeah, a few little interesting bits as well. Uh, without further ado, I think we should just plough into it and uh, see where we go. Um player I'm going to talk about this week is uh, Stephen Leslie. I'm going to keep it relatively brief. Um, he's got six goals this season, four in cups and two in the league. The ones in the league are two free kicks. Um, he scored a hat-trick away at... Lincoln in the uh, League Cup. Anyways, after the Sheffield win, caught up with uh, Steve and had a chat with him and this is what he had to say. Okay Steve, you must be uh, happy. Another great free kick. Um, how do you get to strike the ball so well? Do you practice? Oh, I can't say I practice. I think when I was younger I practiced a lot but as the years come on and go more part time and I don't really get much, much, much practice in, but I'll take, take a free kick past, past two in past two games, so I'll take it. Yeah, I get, uh, again, you know, we get ahead, we go behind. The boys showed a lot of character, you know, and uh, I think with you, with the free kicks, there's always that opportunity. Has it got to the stage now where whenever there's a free kick round the round the box, you're just going to write, that's mine? I just, I, don't know, I, just, I just think there's more belief there, you know. Mm -hmm. Start of the season, I think when we went one down, one down everyone's heads dropped, and I think we're just happy to, to be one down, one, one nil down, I mean, now we go 1-0 down and the hunger's there, we want to fight for each other and get ourselves, and we know we can get ourselves back in the game. Do you, um, are you enjoying your football at Corby Town? Oh, you know, it's a great, great club to be at, you know, I, I'm enjoying it. I wouldn't be here, I wouldn't be here otherwise, you know. I live quite far away, so if I didn't like it, I would, I would, I would yeah, 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 yeah. It's quite a commitment, isn't it, you know, with all the travelling, which I'm sure a lot of you do and, uh, Getting to, just getting to the games, let alone being able to play, you know, must be difficult at times. It is difficult, but, but the thing is, if you enjoy playing football, you'll, you'll do that. You know what I mean? And with a great, great set of Corby has, you know, it's, it's, enjoy, it's enjoyable to play the games there. And it's a great, great um, set of fans as well. Thank you very much. Cheers. Recently this week, and I'm sure you're aware of it by now, Jordan Crawford has been handed a contract by the football club. The other thing is, as I'm sure some of you are aware, that Leon, Leon Lovejoy, um, on loan from Northampton, I believe his uh, loan spell ran out on the 22nd of October-ish, round about that time. So obviously um, no news at this point. Uh, whether he'll be staying or going. Certainly from, from us here at um, Corby Town TV we would wish him all the best in his career and uh, let's hope at one point he can come back and uh, because he's been truly excellent so uh, yeah but uh, I guess we uh, have to work on from there really. What you're going to see is now is you are going to see Grounds We Visit. There you are, that's what I've called it. I don't like that title, but I've called it that anyway. It doesn't matter really. But anyways, here we go. Once upon a time, somewhere in the United Kingdom, football was invented by two pioneers who believed in the power of the beautiful game and dedicated their soul to the invention of it. Nathaniel Creswick and William Prest. These two men wrote the rules and laws for a, a new game and founded the world's first football club, Sheffield FC, on the 24th of October, 1857. Sheffield FC play at the Coach and Horses Stadium, a public house that can be found on the corner 
of the ground as you go in with capacity of 2089. This is the permanent home of Sheffield FC. The club proudly moved to the Coach and Horses Stadium in 2001 and opened the ground with an exhibition match against Manchester United, including disabled and two refreshments outlets, which are very, very nice. The Burger Boys on tour enjoyed their pies, not so keen on the chips, their score three out of five well done to the burger boys see you next time corby town played huntington town in the north out senior youth league corby town lineup on the evening was carl curtis ethan kingston ben mclafferty dean mcbride henry glass leighton watts max mccauley reese day henry mccauley zach allen jordan o'brien craig sutton hilton arthur Sadiq Archer and Hussein Ahmed were the substitutes. Corby came into the game lying fourth in the table, a number of points behind Kettering Down, who were the leaders. But Corby were to go ahead on 14 minutes when Max McCauley's smart finish inside the box was too hot for the keeper to handle. The ball ricocheting up, nice height and his half volley, uh, smart finish and uh, Corby led 1-0 on 14 minutes. It was only a couple of minutes later when Jordan O'Brien's ball into the box, right into the path of Zach Allen on 16 minutes. He got his toe to the ball just in front of the uh, advancing keeper and Corby were uh, 2-0 up within a short space of time. Corby did look menacing with their frequent attacks and their physical presence was greater than their opponents. They were very smart on the ball and the third goal wasn't long in coming. Some slick move involving Jordan O'Brien again. The ball's only half cleared, a bit of fortune and then again some smart interplay and a fierce shot from the edge of the box which unfortunately the uh, Huntington keeper could only parry into the path of Henry McCauley whose smart finish on 20 minutes made the score 3-0 and by that point you maybe felt the game had gone beyond Huntington. Corby didn't let up, they just kept pressing and uh, it was not too long on 26 minutes where Corby found themselves 4-0 up. A free kick was taken, Jordan O'Brien picked up the ball, his brilliant cross into the box was headed by Zach Allen, Dean McBride. His header was saved by the keeper and there was Henry McCauley again to push the ball into the roof of the net to make the score 4-0 on 26 minutes. At that point it really was fearing for the neighbours or the uh, visitors, should say, um, on how this game might end up. Huntington never gave up. They did keep trying. They tried very hard to keep Corby at bay, but uh, it was one of those evenings when you just felt Corby were uh, hitting reasonably good form on the evening. And a smart ball interchange again, which allowed Zach Allen to get his second goal of the evening on 40 minutes to make the score 5-0, who slid his shot under the advancing keeper again it was wonderful interplay in the middle of the park and there was Alan as you can see just pushing the ball under the goalkeeper to make the score 5-0 40 minutes and that's how the teams went in at half time and you felt at that point Corby would climb the table on the evening Within a short space of time, Jordan O'Brien latched on to a forward ball 
on 50 minutes to slide it under the keeper. It wasn't clean contact by O'Brien, but he got just enough on it to put it under the advancing keeper and there Corby had their sixth goal after 50 minutes. Again was on target when he latched on to a poor goal kick. The ball was played over to O'Brien and he was good enough to uh, put the ball in off the post to make the score 7-0. It wasn't the cleanest of finish by O'Brien but it was enough once again to beat the goalkeeper. Corby were then to go 8-0 up on 65 minutes when the ball came out Jordan O'Brien's wonderful cross was only half cleared into the path of Hilton Arthur who come on as a substitute he made no mistake in sliding the ball under the keeper and Corby had their eighth goal and they still had 25 minutes of the game to play Once again, O'Brien just gliding the ball over. And uh, it was unfortunate because the defender had done well. He had to play the ball because there was a Corby player over the other side of him who would have latched onto it. Unfortunately for him, it went straight into the bath path of Hilton Arthur. Corby's final goal would be on... 71 minutes and a fantastic ball laid into the path of Jordan O'Brien who surely, surely scored the best goal of the evening. Some wonderful interplay in the middle of the park and uh, Corby uh, stretched their visitors once again laying the ball into the path of O'Brien. He didn't have to break stride at all. He just calmly moved on to it and put the ball into the top of the net. This meant Corby were now 9-0 up and in fact that was to be the final score in what was a uh, difficult night for the visitors Huntingdon. It was a result that pushes Corby up to second in the table, nine points behind Kettering Town but with two games in hand. My game of the week this week is really interesting, okay, it's looking back, um, we call it classic matches if you want, it, it doesn't matter really, uh, to me they're all classics, and some of you won't agree, uh, but there you are, um, yeah, so the one we're going to look at with Saturday in mind, away in the trophy distantly, it's I've taken you back to December, Boxing Day 2014, Corby Town travelled to St Neats. They were in the process of trying to chase Pool Town down. Um, many people went. Certainly a good support from the, from the side. Difficult game. Um, First goal came when the corner came in. Ben Milne's shot was saved by Bastock on the line and Elliot Chamberlain was on hand to fire the Steelman ahead in the first half. The first half was quite a dull game. Elliot Chamberlain here, it would have been easier for him to score but somehow he missed the target. Steelman did try pushing on and Chamberlain again squared the ball and once more it got away into the second half St Neitz began to come into the game they made three changes at half time and when the corner came in Drew Roberts was on hand to level the scores up the last 
couple of games to try and make that difference. Here comes St Neitz. Ball through there, Ferrari. He's taken a shot. He's past Walker and it's off the inside of the post and it's gone out. And Corby, with that one really. Here comes the corner, floated in. Paul Walker's claiming a handball there. It's come out as far as Hutton. Hutton and there's Drew Roberts and it's in. As the corner floated in, the Corby defence failed to deal with it. Paul Walker tries to get his hand on it and is able to do that. The ball bounces around when it's returned into the box. Drew Roberts, smart turn and finish. <laughs> Here comes St Neitz. Lorenzo Ferrari and he's kept going, he's still going, he's going and there's Ben Mills, Ben Mills and Hutton has taken wide. Here comes uh, Ben, he's played it out to Carvalho, Carvalho now. He's absolutely skinned him there, Theo Davis left him for dead in the ball. over on the far side, Shane Burns got it, he's, been, he's cut that in really, really well, great piece of work, played forward Davis, a bit of a muffin clearance, there's Hutton Hill, I don't know what he's doing now, but um, Chamberlain's in, he's round basket, and the ball's caught, and there's Appleton, it's two, it's, that was a bit of a... Bastock, who's played for Corby this season, was in goal, came out, unable to get the ball. Elliot Chamberlain goes round, and there's Eddie Appleton. Free kick over on the far side. This is going to be taken for Corby. This is going to be floated in, and there's Paul Malone. He's unmarked, and that's just got over the bar again. It's to be there down through at times. Here come Corby again. Taylor, he plays it on. And then Taylor again, he's picked it up. And now Bastock, he's made a good save. And Carvalho, the, his shot is blocked. It's only come out as far as Malone. He's trying to win the ball back. And again from Malone. Davis, he's lost the ball. There goes Chamberlain. Chamberlain. Oh, he's gone round and far too easy. Bastock comes out. He can't do anything with it. There's Ben Mills. 88 minutes. It's 3-2 to the Steelman. That was maybe way too easy. And it does look like... Elliot Chamberlain getting to the byline. Paul Bastock comes out again. Unable to get to the ball. There's Ben Mills. 3-2 to the Steelman. He's uh, going to hang on to this. And then it's a long kick forward by Paul Walker. There's Tommy Wright, he's off. Don't win it. There's Chamberlain, it's 4 2. Stillman have really gone to town. Stoppage time, Elliot Chamberlain fires the ball into the net to finish off a truly remember, rememberable victory. One of the things that has been kindly donated and uh, it's it's going back really to um, fans or people involved in the club putting some input in is uh, Dave Tilly as you know takes photographs does history about the football club and everything like that put together a nice little video I think it's about three minutes of pictures and images I like the word images that I do pictures of our trip up to Sheffield FC the oldest football club in the world. 